In our previous video, we graphed the feasible region that showed us that we had a total of 10 feasible solutions or combinations of power grain and super elite that met the dietary requirements of our athlete. What we're going to do today is what's known as finding the optimal solution. Now, when we're talking about an optimal solution, what we're talking about is finding either a maximum of something. For example, if we're running a business, we might want to find the maximum profits or finding a minimum of something. So for this is this example where we might want to try and find which combination of cans of these foods will give us the minimum cost to our athlete. So something I've added since last time was a cost for the power grain and the super elite. With the power grain, it costs $5 per tin and the super elite costs $3 per tin. To find the optimal solution, the very first step that we need to do is to find this. The objective function. This is absolutely vital. So what is the objective function? If we break it down into the two words, objective means a goal. So what is our goal? In this case, our goal is to minimize the cost for our athlete. Function means, well, how do you work out that cost? So how do you work out that goal? So to do that in our problem, to find the cost, we would take the cost of each one of these tins, so the cost of power grain of $5, and multiply it by the number of tins of power grain that we'd get, represented by x, and add it with the cost of super elite of $3 multiplied by the number of tins we buy, which is represented by y. Now, what's really important with these sort of problems is we do state what our objective function is. So our objective function here is to minimize 5x plus 3y dollars. Now that we've got our objective function, the next step is to use our objective function to work out which one of these combinations is the cheapest. Now, one way that we could do that is to literally substitute every single combination into our objective function and work out how much each of these combinations cost. For example, in this first combination, we've got three tins of power grain and eight tins of super elite. So if we substitute that back into our objective function, our x is equal to three and our y is equal to eight. And that is equal to $39. So if we were to buy three tins of power grain and eight tins of super elite, it would cost us $39. In the second one, we've got four tins of power grain and five tins of super elite. So it'd be five times our x of four plus three times our y of five. When we do that, that is equal to $35. And we can continue this for the remainder of them. So now I've done that, I can look at the total cost of every combination and see that this combination here is my cheapest value. So the minimum cost here is $35 when we use four tins of power grain and five tins of super elite. But could you imagine for a moment if we had more feasible solutions than just the 10 we had here. Could you imagine if we had a hundred of them, or a thousand of them, or a million of them? Would we really want to have to go through every single combination to find which one meets our optimal solution? Well, luckily there's an easier way. Let's for a moment take a look at where our minimum value occurred in our graph. And it's right here at a vertex. Let's have a look at where our maximum value occurred, which was at $49, and that was eight cans of power grain, three cans of super elite. That occurred here at a vertex. 
when we're actually trying to find optimal solutions when we're dealing with linear functions, those optimal solutions will always occur at a vertex. Now, there are some assumptions that I'm taking with this, particularly because I'm dealing with a discrete only problem, and that is that our vertices are all going to be discrete, but we'll cover what happens if they're not at a later stage. Right now, what's important to understand is when we're dealing with linear functions, the optimal solution does actually occur at a vertice, whether it be a maximum solution or a minimum solution. They don't obviously occur at every vertice, so this combination of 3, 8, which is found at the top here, wasn't a minimum or a maximum, but they will always occur at a vertice. So what does that mean for our problem? Well, I didn't actually have to go through every single feasible solution. What I could have done is this. I could have simply taken the three vertices of the problem and substituted them into my objective function and worked out which of them had my minimum cost. So as you can see, this would have been a much faster way to find our minimum cost solution. So to summarise, if we're ever trying to find an optimal solution, we need to do the following. We do first of all need to find the vertices of our feasible region. We then need to find our objective function and to state what we're trying to do with our objective function. We then produce a table like I've got here with the vertices of our feasible region and the objective function here and we substitute each combination into the objective function. We then look at the solutions of that and work out which one's either the minimum or the maximum depending on what our objective function was and we state in words what our final optimal solution that we found is at the end.